Hello, hello everyone. Hello everyone. Uh, Micah is not work. I think Micah is mute. Right. <laughs> okay. Hello, everyone, and thank you for attending my talk. I think it's lunchtime. I'm very really glad so many people are here. <laughs> okay. Uh, before I start, uh, I want to uh, explain about the topic: open source in Debian. And actually, this is uh, open source. Uh, open Open Build service is uh, developed by OpenSUSE, which is the uh, infrastructure for building your packages. And we have been using that at work for a lot. So the uh, my employee encouraged me to uh, contribute to make a Debian official package. So now it's available in Debian packages. So my talk won't cover that uh, how Debian use OBS, but we use OBS at work to build the Debian uh, directive. Yeah. So this is the topic. So I hope it won't confuse you guys too much. So really, uh, uh, thank you uh, to attend. And also, I need to thank that uh, uh, OpenSUSE create such nice uh, uh, tools. It's very easy to use and it saves a lot of time. <coughs> and also, I also need to thank Fosten to give me the opportunity. And this is my first uh, Fosten. I've never been here before, so this is the first time for me. <laughs> OK, um, let me introduce myself. My name is uh, Andrew Lee, and my of, uh, original name is uh, Li Jianqiu. I'm from Taiwan. <laughs> <laughs> so I've started to. Um, uh, contribute to open source by uh, doing the RPM packaging in Red Hat and Mandarin, and then later on become Debian developer since like uh, 2009. And at that time, I was packaging the LXDE project, which is a lightweight desktop. So I'm making to the Debian and also modified Debian installer to support that. And since uh, I also work uh, in the build infrastructure team in Collabora for more than five years. So um, in, in at work, I use OBS a lot to you know building the distribution of packages that for you know, clients need. So let's start uh, the talk today. Okay, let's look at uh, the agenda. Okay, during this talk, I will give you guys the, an, a simple overview about how, what OBS is and how can it benefit you. And also, I will give an example that uh, how it has uh, building very nice uh, workflows like uh, we are using now nowadays. And also, um, I will explain about that the architectures in OBS. So you have basic idea that uh, how the OBS has multiple machines running, has also the builder behind. So once you, after you have the architecture overview, it will be easier for you to, do, to install the package you created in official Debian distribution to set up OBS for your, your need. And then in the end, I will provide the, the how you can modify you know, to optimize that you need and, and put into OPS into your, uh, maybe your infrastructure at work. <coughs> okay, let's look at the, the, the overview. And let's start to look at the, the uh, classic packaging way, just without OBS. Like used to that you have a, a, a user, you need, to, uh, you need your software, you need to build. Uh, for example, here is an example you build the MT MD64 architecture Debian JC package, and then you, once you build it, and you publish into your uh, uh, repository, so users can download your package. And then for the time being, you have more users. They request a m m multiple distribution, like a Debian has a new release, like a stretch, so you need to have an, another repository. So, and this kind of thing that you need to maintain two clean children, one is for Debian JC and one is for stretch. To, for your users to download, and then you need to uh, upload twice after you build it, the binary package. So, and, and, and no longer time, then, then you, you have more users. Maybe the users request other architecture. Then you just uh, need to maintain multiple clean shell root and multiple uh, uh, architectures. And, and more and more, like uh, your users request, like uh, you build on Debian and also Ubuntu and multiple dif different version of Ubuntu, and multiple different version of Debian, and you become really, really messy because you have maintained so many different architectures, for example, and then different distributions, and different versions. And how can you maintain so many clean shooters? And just imagine that one of your modification, one bug fix. Okay, you build maybe on some version of Debian, maybe fail on one version of other distributions. Then how can you manage this? You have to build so many times, and then you catch it out. Oh, it's, it's a problem. So it takes a lot of time in a classical way. 
So let's fix this kind of mix. How to mix, how to fix. Just put the OBS as your built infrastructure. And OBS has built in those kind of things. You can choose the different architectures, different distributions, and different versions. OK, and then it's done. So how much time and resources you see? <laughs> Okay, um, let's look at the, uh, the, the uh, now you have basic idea how OBS can save your time, right? So let's look at the, the benefits. Okay, the benefits is eventually that for the, the most of you, like even you are existing or new software projects, or you are uh, packages or you are users, you all can benefit from using OBS. Here is an example, that, uh, um, is this example, you see the screenshot? We just upload one source package there, source upload, and then you have, a, you can see the multiple um, distribution and different architectures we configured to build as our target. And some other uh, distribution, some other architectures was missing because there's no dependency, so it was shows that unresolvable. And the other build it shows like a subsist. So just uh, once, this is for the for the existing uh, software projects. Okay, but once the package is built. You don't have to upload, copy the binary to the publish on the website, right? That OBS does that for you, automatically publish. So you can see this example. Uh, here is Apartex, uh, uh, it's a Debian directive that will be covered by Andrew Shadura tomorrow morning. And also my colleague will give a talk. But here is an example for, for the repository screenshot. You can see that package published to it. And also have a very nice uh, a workflow. Just imagine you have a, a production product and then you need to provide like a, a security fix into your production product. But before you land the, the new package, you would be better to have some QA to test. Or in another case, it's like a, a, the, you need to release a, a product and you have a slight, like a software a freezing for bug fixing only. So you may have a release manager to, 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 to review and approve the package you want to learn you to, into your production uh, product. So in OBS has built in that uh, uh, submit and reviews workflow. So you can just upload into the OBS and submit. And have a, you can say have a QA or you have a release manager to approve. <coughs> okay, here is a, a quick look. You see that uh, it's a package is submitted. And we can see that the package all builds under the target distributions. Then you can decide if you want to learn it or, or not. And for Packagers, if you build in package used to, you have to do the like command line to maintain you know, many, many different clean tutors to build your uh, software, your packages. And, and for OBS, every time it builds uh, the source package, it uses a deep bootstrap to automatically create the clean tutor to build in that environment. So all the packages that you, use, you upload once, and then you all build in the, the same uh, um, uh, consistency and also reproducible way on OBS. So it saves a lot of time for your, your packages. Okay, if you are the users, the OBS provide very nice uh, you know, repository. I just said uh, before I start uh, the, the presentation, I was talking with someone outside. They said the developer always like to have this very, very uh, new packages. So if you work in the environment, maybe you are a developer, also you are a user, because your colleague may have one something new software. So if you have an OBS setup, they can just land the latest version, and you can just keep tracking those kind of dependencies. So you guys can build on the same environment if you are users. So it'll be a nice feature. Okay, it's just like a, here is a simple that the OBS will generate the repository, so you can share repository with other users. It'll be easier. Okay, let's look at again about the uh, more detail about the OBS features and then the workflow. So, in OBS, it's very, very nice that uh, you, you save a lot of time because it builds on multiple distribution and different architectures. And OBS can let you, uh, if you want to build a different, uh, you know, different architecture and also different distributions, you don't have to mirror the whole whole repository from remote. He has a built-in the download on demand. You can just choose the target distribution and target the uh, uh, architectures. So it will handle those kind of things automatically for you. Just like example, like here. You can configure one 
a project on the OBS. So one source upload, you can build on the Debian JC and Ubuntu different version and different <laughs> Debian versions. And also in the uh, config file, you can also add the extension to the binary package and then it builds. So once it builds then publish, you can find the, find the file name, you can know, okay, this one is built for Debian what version and the what, uh, Ubuntu version. So you can add this kind of extension in the binary packages. And also it has uh, like a, a revision control for the source package. It's like a, a, in, the, in the repository, every time you have a, the source changes, right? You check the, 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 the log. And you can, if something broken, you can just revert to a previous uh, revision. So you have to track all the changes for the source packages. Okay, there's the uh, automatic source processing. You upload the, the source package. You don't have to do the command line to build the so software you own because OBS handle this for you. <coughs> and then you also uh, can help you to calculate about the de build dependencies. So if something mixing, you will show that you will see that it's unresolvable for example, on the web UI. And once you click on that, it will show us what is missing. So you can see the missing dependency on the web GUI. Very, very nice. And then you can list that uh, uh, in the one project, you can see all the successful build packages. You can also see that the failed one. If you see multiple failed one in the team, you can assign you know, different uh, tasks to other different uh, developer team member to fix the fail to build on source package. So it's, it's very uh, helpful for the uh, work in the team. And then, of course, work in the team, it has the SS uh, control for the source repository. You can see a repository can have a permission for different uh, team members on different projects. And also, you have a request view system, like I mentioned before, for the, uh, you have a production server or something, production uh, product, and they have some new changes. You have someone, QA or release manager, can review the, the, the new package, new updates. Here, example that I uploaded the package, and someone can, can see that it accepted, you can see the, the history every time. All, all these things are tracked on the web UI. Okay, after I introduced about the features and workflow, let's look at the, the architectures. Basically, that architecture has a backend server, which is storage that the, the, the uh, your packages and also the worker, which is need the power to build the package, and then the, the web front end and the command line tools. Let's look at the, uh, the backend server. The backend server basically has uh, several daemons to handle the source and the uh, scheduler, and the uh, dispatcher is assigned the tasks for builders and also repositories. And here is the, in the corner you can see that the, the build host is the OBS worker. You can connect the OBS worker with some cloud computer or containers or something. You can build, have multiple. When you need the more, more, more powerful uh, things, you can add more scale, scale that the, the builders easily. Okay, and this web front end is uh, uh, Ruby on Rails. This is the only one need the, the database. The, the backend doesn't need, but the web UI need the, the database. Okay, and then command line tools. I think that uh, you use the tool, you can, uh, as a user, you can interact with the, the whole system, the backend and the web front end. You can just uh, use the, the, the command line tools. I think let's uh, have an example. Here, it's just uh, the command line tool is called uh, OSC. And OSC has a, like a CVS control, similar command is the checkout. So I can check out uh, my home branch. It's a hello package. Once I check out and and I can go into the folder and see there's a Debian package there. Okay, um, I'm sorry. I extract the, the, the Debian package and can see that the, the source code. Then go into the, the package folder and I extract it. You can see this package. I can see there's a Debian folder there. It just modified the package as usual. And then after you modify it, you, you, you may to bump the revision, right, in the change log. And then you just regenerate the, the, the source package. And once you regenerate the source package, you can see here, this is a CO1, this is a new revision I add, appended in the, in, the, in the source package. And you can see the old one without the, the CO1. So in here, you just use OSC to remove the, the older 
uh, source version, add the new one. Okay, and then you can just do the commit. Once you've done this on the command line, you go back to web UI, you can see the, the package is building on the different architecture or different distribution that you, you configured it in the project. And you can click that, you can see the build log on the web UI. So this is, uh, and also uh, we have also uh, the, uh, if you want to, uh, if you want to know more detail about the OSC, you just uh, read the main page or help. It has lots of very simple command there. And also we have a, a deep put uh, plugin. And deep put plugin is similar like a, a, like a in Debian or developer like a, the deep put command. So with similar syntax, you can just uh, uh, use one command to upload your source package instead of uh, many, many steps like I showed you before. So it's a nice tool. Okay, then now you have the, the, the basic uh, architecture idea, then you can know how to config. But before that, I want to say that uh, this is a, was a, a four years work, because when I want to package an OBS, <coughs> a lot of JavaScript and Ruby gem was broken or mixing or something in Debian, like more than 100 packages. So <laughs> before I package that, I need to you know, have all the dependency ready in Debian. So I need to go into Debian and then find out oh, what kind of uh, thing is missing and then start to do that and make a proper Debian package and upload it into new queue. And please, please have you <laughs> review my, my package and go into the repository. So after two distribution, I think uh, JC and the stretch, finally stretch, I catch that uh, the, the, the time. So now the package is landed in Debian stretch. Okay, so now it's easy to install. Now you have idea that uh, OBS has back end and uh, also the front end and also the worker. So you can use the app get install, uh, one of those, but not doing all of this on the same machine. Because ju just you can imagine that when you build building like a LibreOffice and some other like a Firefox on, you know, and on the, on the uh, builders, and now maybe that all the resources be taken then your web function probably won't work. So don't put it on the, the same machine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here is example, just a, a simple command. And all dependency already already fixed in, in Debian, so you can see that I put in uh, lots, of, uh, lots of packages. <laughs> so after you do that command, okay, you just do the, uh, just check the readme.debian. You need some post install uh, script running on that. And also I mentioned all the details in the readme.debian, you just read there. And also uh, we do that the uh, OBS in containers. You can check out the, the container example there. We are working on that. But I'm really, really new uh, to containers. If you find something weird, because it's, it's my first Docker image. So if you have any, any problem, problem layer, please, please let me know, <laughs> okay? <laughs> okay, and uh, uh, in the, in the uh, Docker image, we also provide a, a script called test script. So you can just check the, the script there. It's some simple command, command line. You just run the, the, the test script. It will uh, fetch the hello package from Debian and then upload. So you can see the first your hello package builds on, on Debian. Okay, so I think this is mostly in the uh, end of my talk. I want to give you some tips for how to uh, do the optimized OBS at your environment. So here is some example that we do that uh, merge our MISC. This is actually, uh, we fork this uh, software from Ubuntu to make it modify to uh, uh, work together with uh, OBS. So we have a distribution that we as a Debian directive on base of uh, Ubuntu. But we need to track if there's uh, any update from Ubuntu or maybe it is from Debian. There's some security fix. So we need to, to run a software to do the continuously uh, integration. So this software will compare the upstream new version, that is the one, and also the local one. And if the differences, then we do the three-way three merges. After the three-way merges, it will generate the source package and upload and put into uh, OBS and then request for review. So you can uh, see that uh, uh, the package is submitted automatically by merge our MISC. And you can see that the review, you can see that if you, uh, the, 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 the software abused successfully or it failed. If you failed, they needed some one human to, to fix. 
if we build successfully, maybe you can just click uh, accept it, and that the in new version, new fix will be going to your uh, uh, production repository. And also, you can hook that uh, with the, your uh, bug tracker. Like uh, in the change log, you have something close some bug. So once the package learned, then you can have uh, uh, OBS to send the trigger to your bug tracker to close the bug or update the status of your bug on your, your working environment. And also, you can integrate with Jenkins to build a package from Git, like we're using that for the kernel uh, source package. Then in kernel, we have uh, multiple developers working on the patch set in the Git. So this one will automatically check out repository, uh, check out the source package, and then regenerate new uh, patch set and apply to the source package and then you know, upload a new revision, submit it into um, OBS. You can even um, build that uh, uh, like a, a distro image with the, with the Jenkins, also in the same way. The, the build script will fetch that the packages from the OBS repository also. Then you can use that to, to build your uh, <coughs> image. And also you can test that the, the, with Lava on the auto test on the actual hardware. And Lava is a nice tool developed by Linaro and also uh, what we have is kernel CI to test uh, the kernel boots on real hardware. You can uh, integrate it the, with the uh, Lava. And there are more details I will be mentioning tomorrow, tomorrow 9 p.m. or 9 a.m. in the morning. My colleague Andrew Shadura will explain that about uh, Debian Directive Platform for uh, information and automotive vehicles that we are doing this. And he will mention about all how the infrastructure was Lava, Jenkins, and also as a software with OBS. Okay, that's a recap of uh, my talk. So now you have uh, the basic idea of how, what's about OBS, how can that solve your time, save your time, and also the, the features and workflow, and how you can install, and how you may possibly integrate this into your working environment. Okay, thank you for attending. Is there any questions? must have been in 2014 or so. I know that the Debian project was looking at ops. I think it was Wookie and some other people were looking at ops to using it in the Debian built infrastructure. I haven't heard anything out of that. Probably that they, they decided not to do it. Are you aware of that? Is that somehow related to your work or not? Oh, I didn't know that Wookie was looking for that. <laughs> I didn't know Wookie was looking for that. I didn't know that. <laughs> Collaborate and now on. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's not crazy, but somebody has to do a load of work to change everything. So, um, yeah. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, any more questions? Can you show the benefits once again, the summary of the benefits? The slide. Oh, the benefits. Benefits slide, can you show it once again? Oh. Means that the uh, very, very uh, beginning. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, very beginning. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I made too many slides. <laughs> you mean this one? You mean this one? Benefit summary. Benefit summary? Uh, where was the benefit summary? <laughs> <laughs> this one, right? This one. <laughs> okay. You talked about uh, integrating with Jenkins, so people who today use Jenkins to build their uh, packages, should, you would recommend to switch to OBS. The, the part about Jenkins, you went pretty fast, it's about building distros by getting packages from OBS. Oh, the, his question is that the, uh, most people use Jenkins to build packages nowadays, right? So and, and then that uh, was a benefit you switch you step OBS or not. Okay, OBS is actually just uh, like uh, the previous uh, uh, slide. Here is the uh, infrastructure. If you build Jenkins, then you don't see that overview of the packages, and you don't have the, the review system, right? But if you just uh, plus a layer of your Jenkins, you generate the source package, but you don't build inside Jenkins, but submit the, the source package into OBS, and build into OBS, and you can see, you can have all the OBS benefit, and you know, nice features you can use that integrate into your uh, build environment. 
Okay, do I answer your question? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I have a second question. The, uh, how easy is it for a user that doesn't know anything about packaging to, uh, to do the following, to say, oh, I, I want to backport this package that it's, it is available in Buster, and I want to have it built for, for, uh, for Stretch or even for Jesse? Okay, his question is that if your user doesn't have much experience on packaging, you know, and then they want to try to do a backport, I think that yes, because uh, you can just create a project and you can set up the DOD to have different target distributions. Then you can just try to import the source package into that project, and you can see uh, how many missing de build dependency. You, you can also try to import without modify maybe it builds. Okay. But for that, you have to know uh, enough about the packaging, I guess. No, no, <coughs> no. no just import. You just you can use the deep put plugin. One command, then put into the <laughs> repository, so the and look at the web UI and see if any build dependency is missing there. So when you uh, when you upload this stuff, adding it to the open build OBS thing, you don't have to worry about this manifest manifest things like the Debian compat or the Debian uh, rules or whatever those things. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. You have to, you have to worry about that. It doesn't necessarily solve all your problems. Uh, his his question was that uh, uh, if it's uh, easy to y use uh, uh, OBS without the, the packaging knowledge, so that uh, uh, things uploaded, they can yeah. I think he should just just will try. I think the time time is up. So <laughs> so if I uh, have more questions, you can grab me outside. Okay. Thank you for attending.